Hello everyone and welcome on board. In today's flight we're going to fly from La Palma to Fuerteventura and we're going to do this together starting from scratch, doing our flight plan together, making sure that we have the right fuel on board, making sure that we have done everything ourselves manually, um, including looking at the performance calculator, at the meta uh, information, um, takeoff and approach procedure. I will try to be as accurate as possible. And in addition to that, we are going also to take a look at a simulation of having actual passengers on board by a PAX, which is this tool that allows you to, um, to simulate a full flight. And based on how you behave into the, the simulator, you will see later on that, uh, for instance, passengers react to the way you fly. Okay, so having said that, where do we start? Well, first of all, where, where are we going? So GCLA, from GCLA to GCFV. So I went to SimBrief, I created a new flight from scratch. Let's add the departure airport, GCLA, and the arrival one, GCFV. The system automatically cal um, calculates the alternate airport, flight number, Francie tube, and the time of the day today. This is just my way of doing, you can pick yours. Uh, airframe A320-200, this is the one that we can use in order to calculate parameters um, of the aircraft, such as climb profile and so on and so forth. The departure runway and arrival runway is selected by the tool. This is the time, schedule time and route, which is also calculated by the tool. We will have an the system will give us, will tell us how many passengers we have on board. I will also select cargo to make sure that we have um, also some payload. And now it's time to look at the flight plan. So these are the routes. You can choose whatever routes you like. It's a short flight, so I'm not going to mess up too much with it. Um, I'm happy with these, uh, with these points in the middle. You know, we have to do such a short flight that we don't need to go, go, go nuts. So first piece of advice, make sure that you leave pounds here. Do not select kilograms and I'll show you why. Let's click generate OFP so that the system can calculate for us the flight plan. Okay, so here we have the information about origin destination as we selected before. So we have the block time, which consists of airtime plus taxi and departures and arrival procedure. But the first parameter which is important to us is the block fuel, 11,000 pounds. So what do we do with that information? We go into the flight simulator. We have, I selected already a livery here. There is a mega pack. Uh, I can share the link into, into the comment section if you're interested in getting it. But what we want to do now is the weight and balance. So here we are in the weight and balance section of the, of the game before jumping into the aircraft, okay? Um, and what we want to do here is to make sure that we select the right values for fuel and payload. So first of all, we have seen that fuel is 11,647 pounds. So I'm going to decrease this. You need to pay attention here. This is the fuel. This is the max allowable fuel in the aircraft. But we want, what we want to select is the uh, amount of fuel that we're going to put in the tanks. So 11,647, 11,647, 11, okay, this is, I'm fine with this, 11,792. Now payload, for the payload, you want to look at the TOW. TOW stands for takeoff weight, which is indicated here. And let's make sure that we are more or less around that value. Let's go for a 58%. All right, about three, four, five, maybe it's closer to this value. This is fine. You get a warning here because mm, probably the, the, the aircraft is not really well balanced. I'm not sure if there is a, there's a misalignment between uh, sim brief and the actual simulator. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to leave it like that and ignore it. So we have selected La Palma. Now it's time to select the departure point. I usually just pick one and then I want to make sure that I select the gate so that we are um, like gate two, so that we are ready to uh, ready for the onboarding. And now we can click fly. All right, so here we are in, in uh, Palma. 
and we are inside the aircraft and let's get ready for the onboarding. Bax is a tool that allows you to configure a flight and uses the data that you generate into the flight simulator to actually simulate the behavior of passengers on board. So first of all, we need to start the flights and I want to do it as, of course, as, as pilot in my career. This is already taken from, uh, from Flight Simulator, sorry, for, from SimBrief. What we can do is actually together put the data in. So our departure is GCLA, destination GCFV, flight number, it's FY0925. Our cruise altitude is the flight level 310 that is already correctly inserted into the into packs. The airtime is 042. So this is the amount of time that we will be actually flying in air. And the block time, I usually put half an hour. You don't need that much time, but you know, half, half an hour is, is, is okay. I have created my version of the A320neo, uh, which is not really great. I don't think it's perfect, so I'm not ready to share that. But now we have to uh, put the number of passengers. So how many passengers? Simple. We go into the flight plan and we look for PAX. PAX is the estimated number of passengers on board today, which is 154. Then we can click next. Then we can choose what type of aircraft we have. For such a small flight, definitely we will not be serving any meal. We have the Wi-Fi and I'm not going to select anything else because that's fine. Let's press start. And now if we click here, the boarding procedure has started. Okay, now that the jetway is going to be connected, this picture here resembles much more the truth. Our passengers are getting into the aircraft from the, from the jetway now, and as you can see, there is Dwight Warner taking a seat here, there is Katrina Martin there, there is uh, Edgar here in business class, as well as Janet. And while we wait for, for people, for our passengers to get on board, we need to prepare for the flight. So let's go here and let's work together on the flight plan. You want to make sure, so the first thing I do usually is to want to make sure that the radio comms are on me. I don't want the autopilot to start talking randomly with the ATC. So let's start inserting all the information. GCLA is our departure airport. GCFB is our arrival airport. So we click here. These are the commercial routes already in the system, which are none. I'm fine with that. Now here we have the alternative airport. I'm going to select GCLP. And that's it. Flight number is FY0925. Uh, our cost index is here. You need to go to the to the paperwork and at the top you have cost index 18. So I'm going to add 18. The flight level as we've seen before is 310 and we're done with the screen. Awesome. Now if you remember I told you to put fuel and weight of the aircraft before jumping to the aircraft and the reason why is because then these values here are already correctly inserted for you. If you want to know what those are, well, this, the ZFWCG is the zero fuel weight center of gravity, which is exactly this value here, 19 point, nine, sorry, 14.97 is 15. As you can see, it's the same. This one is the zero fuel weight, which is the empty weight plus payload, converted from pounds into kilograms or tons, actually. I even have a nice, uh, a nice website for, for this. So um, suppose that you are not, you are in the game and you are setting up this and you want to make sure that you put the right value here for the zero fuel weight. So 90400 plus 41 is 131 and 400. Pounds. 
pounds, kilograms, 5965 So now it's time to look at the routing. In this case it's going to be quite simple from GCLA. So you go to flight plan, you click on from, departure and then you select all the right information based on the routing. So we're going to take off from runway 36 and our uh, seed is LRIS2T. Insert. Now we have Laris as the last point and then as the plan suggests DCT which stands for direct to Koput. Co All right, then we can press insert. Now we have coupled here. And the last connection is a star to GCFV arrival on 01. I'm going to select X randomly, I don't know. And then we are going to select the star Copu 3S, this one. Novaya, insert. And our flight plan is complete. How do we know if this is a good flight plan or not? We can actually go here and we can select plan, plan mode and then we can go point by point into, into this. So we can actually click flight plan and then we start from GCLA, then we go north and then east, east, east and then our approach into, into, into the final runway. So now we have insert, inserted the, the flight plan, I want to know what is the boarding status, so I'm going to click here. I'm using an alpha version, so some of the stuff is still a little bit broken, but what I can do is boarding status check. We are still boarding, let us know. Okay, they're still boarding, there we are two minutes expected time left before the boarding is complete. So I guess for us it's about time to start the APU. And as we heard, we are ready to go whenever we want. So now it's a good time to ask for the disconnection of the jetway. And now we can request IFR clearance for instrumental flight plan. Now there are the security demonstration happening. We can tell the crew that we are uh, ready. So technically the cabin check is this one. We're putting some stuff away. We're almost ready for departure. Okay, they are almost ready for departure. So we need to wait a little bit longer. While we do that, I am going to show you also performance. What does it mean? Well, it means that Technically, you need to calculate the performance parameters before taking off. The performance are the ones in, in this tab in the MCDU, perf, so for takeoff. Uh, specifically, what we want to do today is, uh, what we want is, is make sure that we select the right values in there. So, 
On this web page, you can select the aircraft, the engine, the units, and we can also insert now the GCLA, our starting airport. A flaps they are going to be in one plus F. Packs are on, anti-icing not required. It's dry because it's not raining, and our our um, selected runway is 36. So some other parameters is calculating in here, then we can press calculate. And now here you can see that our temperature flex max is 68. So we've seen before, flaps one, temperature 68. Cool. Now in uh, A32NX there is even a takeoff test which you can press and will show you a checklist here. Exactly, so we so you heard it now, cabin ready for for takeoff. So I'm going to follow the checklist, auto brake max. And well first of all we need to get a clearance for takeoff. Now we can ask our autopilot to do this for us. And spoilers armed, armed. Let's close the cockpit door, and we are take we are clear for takeoff. So let's do it. Let's give it a bit of throttle, and now we can go to max flex. As you can see, the flex is here because we we inserted the temperature now. The actual flex is controlled by, 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 by the system. If we didn't insert that information, we wouldn't be able to use it now. So runway turn lights are not needed anymore. We're not taking off anymore, but we will keep the landing lights on. Um, until we reach 10,000 feet. How did the takeoff go? We can go again in packs and you can see that they are still very satisfied with the way we are um, flying. We can go back to our flight plan and we can look at the flight log. So we're supposed to take off from La Palma, which we did. We are climbing. We have to go direct until we reach TOC, which is LRIS2T. Essentially in Laris. Okay. So one second, we're passing through 10,000 feet which means that I can turn off the landing lights, I can turn off the seat belts, and I'm going to tell Okay, now I told I switched off the seat belt lights and so the cabin will also inform the passengers. And as you can see here, some of the people already took them off. As it happens in reality, right? People taking those off. We can already ask our crew to start serving some some drinks, let's say. All right. Okay. So what do we need to do here? So top of climb was in L R L A R Y S should be three one zero. Let's try to do that. So we need to reach three one zero when we get more or less here, Laris. 
Um, so let's ask immediately for an altitude increase of 10,000 feet. Again, let's always pay attention to the external temperature. If there is visible moisture around us, as you can see also here from the weather, uh, the radar, the weather is not 100% clear, even though we are going into the clear. So possibly the icing conditions or the risk for actual icing is quite low. But nonetheless, let's always pay attention to the, to the temperature. Our passengers on board are satisfied so far. Some people are hungry. Some other people are thirsty. And here in PAX, you can do quite some things. You can actually inform them there is a problem with the aircraft or delay or diversion, like uh, in the case there is bad weather, or you can just talk to, to, to the passengers, right? You can actually, for instance, say something humorous or general or some point, like indicate some point of interest outside, but you can also speak to them directly. And of course, you're just speaking to, to, a, com to, a, to a program, but still, fun if you want to really um, as you can see we lost it we lost the airspeed indicator indicating that we have I think we are in nice conditions now uh, in fact the TAT was at 10 degrees but anyway so what we are going to so as I was saying you can even interact using your own voice like hello everyone this is your captain speaking. Welcome on board. Have a safe flight. And yeah, see you on the other side. So you can actually say, This is humorous. Hello, everyone. This is your captain speaking. Welcome on board. Have a safe flight. And yeah, see you on the other side. As a reaction to when you say something humorous, apparently the satisfaction goes a little bit up.
Let's check again on our passengers. 97% satisfaction. Exactly. So, because the flight is such a short flight, they will not be serving any any drinks or anything, which means that, uh, yeah, if you're hungry, you stay hungry. So, since we are here waiting, not doing anything, let's prepare for for our takeoff. What does it mean? Well, in the performance here, now we're cruising, but afterwards we will be in uh, we will be doing an approach right so the way i usually do approach is first of all looking into the, the meter or meter information of our destination um, airport so in this case is gcfv which is fuerteventura correct so the report was made uh, 40 minutes ago which is more or less fine but and this is the meter information that we are interested in. so first of all the Q which is the pressure is 1020 Pascal so 1020 is our Q 1020 Q and H the temperature is 24 degrees lucky them then we have wind information, which is this one here, 010, 08 knots. So 010, 8 knots. And we have filled in all this information here on the left. Then we also know that we are approaching with ILS, the runway 01. And here there are two other pieces of information, which is the MDA and the NDH, which is the maximum or no, minimum decision altitude or the decision height. The first one is used for non-precision approaches like BOR or VOR. And the second one is used for precision approach. Where do we find this information? Well, there's a page here, a website I found, which contains a lot of information about uh, airports like uh, nav charts specifically so what I usually do I go here and I hope I find the right PDF so GCFV Woohoo! lucky so Fuerteventura we have it now we have to find the ILS for runway 01 so usually I do RWY01 and I hope to be lucky This is the RNAV departure. These are departure charts. So ILS X, in this case, our decision attitude, we need to refer to the minimums, which is uh, the minimums should be around here, straight in landing. Decision height is uh, either A, B, C or D. Uh, usually they are not so complicated, you just have one, but okay, I'm going for the decision height of 266. So what do we do? We go here, performance, approach, 266, decision height. Alright, so we did that. According According to the plan, we are supposed to arrive in half an hour, which is sensible. I think we will be a little bit earlier than half an hour.
Okay, there's something wrong in the flight plan, but we are managing together. So we're below 10,000 feet. We have begun our final descent into your destination. Flight attendants will be passing through the cabin to collect any trash one final time. Please ensure tray tables are stowed and seats are in the full upright position. Please also store any carry-on items either in the seat back pocket or under the seat in front of you. Please complete all Wi-Fi related tasks and stow any larger electronics. Since we are approaching now the runway, I will also enable the ILS information display. And as you can see, we have already intercepted the signal, ILS runway 19. And the decision height, the decision height that we have inserted before into the system shows up here in the enunciator, informing us that yeah, our information has been received and is also going to be used by the aircraft. can even tell the passengers on board to look outside the windows to look at something interesting as you can see that also helped with their satisfaction now they are distracted looking at the Canary Islands as you can see this is our runway this is where we are supposed to land And now, thanks to this turn, we will finally intercept the slowly this diamond here will move to the right so that we can safely land. But apparently I'm not intercepting the glide slope. What does that mean? Maybe we have to do it manually? Okay, so let's go back at the charts. We should be approaching at 2,500 feet when we are approximately 3.9 nautical miles. We should be descending with a six degree angle, which is... Well, this is actually quite a strong descent. But now we also missed the runway completely. What's happening? This is weird. I missed the approach. Clearly missed the approach. And now it's descending. Nope, 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 nope. Altitude holds. Nope. We missed the approach. Climb to on six two five three zero, then turn right onto track, climb into two five thousand and four thousand and hold. So four thousand feet is our altitude to hold and we should go right. Uh, makes sense we don't want to go on the mountains. Yeah published. Two, six, zero, zero, six. Actually. Ah, yeah, 
am, I am, I am. And this will have an impact, of course, on our evaluation. Which means I need to inform. Which means I have to inform the passengers that there is a delay of uh, rejected traffic go around of 10 minutes 20 minutes That's the, the error. Why do I have 19 there? We're going to land manually. 109.5. 109.5. Course is 6 degrees. As you can see, we cannot engage the correct uh, uh, glide slope for the runway there. So we are going to land manually. So we will be approaching at 180 knots. At 180 knots. With a 6 degree angle from 3.9. Uh, an angle of 6 degrees is a percent, uh, almost 10 percent, I would say 10 percent, which means at 200 knots, at 200 knots we need to climb down at 2000 feet per minute. Okay, that's a bit steep, but that can be done. Okay, let me engage location mode now. So we will be turning now against the VOR. Turn left. Turn left. You're missing it. Okay, there's a there's a bug in the game or something because this is not working the way it's supposed to. How far are we from the runway? 10 nautical miles. So when we are at four nautical miles, we need to, to essentially descend 2,000 feet per minute. I'm afraid that this won't get cleared, right? Or well, maybe yes. So lock now is using the VOR. Ooh, maybe yes, maybe yes, maybe yes. Nicely, go back, stay up. No, it's not intercepting the signal. Okay, it's time to go manual. We are 7 nautical miles ready for our descent. Let's use the GPS and let's start our 
the sand at 2000 feet per minute. Maybe something like that will be enough. Let's go to zero. Let's get there. Vertigo speed selected, flaps out. Flaps out, landing gear out. Uh, for what is the altitude of the runway? Airport runway 37. Okay, we can go to zero. So this is fine if we set zero. No, 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 no. Continue, continue. Go down, go down, go down. We will get there, guys. This will work. Um, no, 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 no. Go down, go down, go down, go down. Break, break, break. More flaps. I'll take control of everything myself now. Give me no, 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 come on. Yes. Yes, we made it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our destination. The local time is 9.56 a.m. and it's currently about 23 degrees Celsius. You can now use your I'm pretty sure they will not be happy with my landing. Are you curious? Me too. Ooh, 93! Not bad, not bad, not bad. If you're making a connection, we encourage you to check your itinerary to ensure a smooth continuation of your journey. So yeah, I'm sorry it didn't go as smooth as we wanted, but what's important is that the aircraft is here, we are here, we landed in the right, at the right airport, the passengers seem, seem to be also happy. So let's park here, okie dokie. And now what do we do? Well, now we can ask for the jetway which is already getting connected, awesome. We can turn off the engines. We can get external power and we can commence the deboarding, sorry, which should start automatically in these 30 seconds after the engine has been switched off. There we go. The deboarding has started and now, as you can see, our passengers will leave the aircraft which means that we can also ask for baggage service so they can get their baggage back okay so according to the instructions of uh, of packs you could at this point already ask for uh, um, you can even ask already for the end of flight which i'm going to do so we can see the final report okay so this was the flight of today we were supposed to depart at 8 a.m we departed with almost 10 minutes or more than 10 minutes actually 12 minutes 
uh, with, with the product 12 minutes ahead of schedule. We arrived still earlier than expected. I believe this plan was after I enunciated, I, I told the passengers that we were running late. Uh, the landing rate is horrible, as you can see here. Um, block time was one hour and 50 minutes. And okay, so what are the notable events of today? Well, there was a short arrival delay due to go around, more like a missed approach or a bug in the game. And also there was a hard landing that was indeed the case. And some comments from the passenger was like, we didn't even get any water. And someone is also impressed that we made up the lost time. I'm totally telling my friends about this airline and the landing was a bit rough. So I'm okay, I'm happy that it was just a bit rough because we bounced, I believe. Well, I hope this video was entertaining enough for you today. Write in the comments if you would like me to cover some other aspects of the game or if you would like me to travel from specific locations or if you would like me to show uh, more about the game that I haven't. Having said that, as always, wish you all a safe flight. Ciao!